blocks. Um, I mean, there you can marry so many different options in there. So. Okay, so now our next step is going to be choosing the quilted circle size. So I, I pulled out a bunch of circles and uh, I'm looking at our inside puzzle piece. This is a three inch finished circle and I'm looking at that and I'm thinking for my inside circle or my small circle, I'm thinking I want to go just a hair smaller. This wouldn't be bad if I were going to go a little bit bigger, but that's not going to leave me enough room out here for my rays, in my opinion, for this size border. So I'm going to go ahead and use to use a two and a half inch finished, which means, of course, that's going to be just a little bit smaller. It's actually going to finish at that size. So, um, Obviously, by having, that's a little bit too big because that doesn't leave a lot of room for my rays on the outside. So this guy is going to be a three and a half inch finished circle. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that with my two and a half. And that to me is gonna give me a really lovely size inner circle. So I'm going to go with that. So I'm going to go with three and a half finished for the outside, two and a half finished for the inside circle. Okay, so I'm going to place my large circle in line. And again, what I'm doing is I'm lining that up straight up and down. I've got a piece of tape right in the middle going across. So I know to line that line up right there. So now I've got that perfectly balanced. I'm simply going to bring my machine over. Pull up my stitches. Do my tie on. Double check my circle, make sure all is well. Get everything in place. I've got a nice um, little bit of sticky under there so that circle is not gonna slip and slide. I'm gonna go one, Two. Stop. I'm going to slide up. I always like to get rid of my tail. Come back down. Stop. I'm going to travel the ditch inside. I'm going to grab my puzzle piece and I'm going to work my way across two of these so you get the idea and with this puzzle piece if you want to widen that just a little bit Mr. Ritchie with the puzzle piece I simply use our tape I've got it across the puzzle piece and now I simply undo the puzzle piece it goes around the foot I slide the puzzle piece right back in there take my tape Put that back there just to give it a little bit more stability. And of course, I've added a little bit of sticky under there. Now I've also added um, tape where that goes there. And we have marks on all of these. So Mr. Wallen, why wouldn't you just use an outside sewn circle? Yes, so um, Rich said, how come I wouldn't just use an outside and sewn circle? This is going to finish at two and a half inches. I find myself that this particular circle, which is um, three and a half inches finished, is the smallest that I would ever want to hold on to to go around as a circle. Anything uh, three inches and smaller, I am going to use an inside circle just to keep myself safe and to keep my fingers away from the needle. So I'm going to line this up.
there. I'm going to travel that ditch right in. Hold that stable. One. Two. And on this one, I'm going to go ahead and do a third. So three. And that's going to keep that nice and stable. Stop. I'm going to go ahead, take off the puzzle piece. I'm going to slide over to the next area. And I'll just go ahead, place my circle, use my ditcher. Get close. Put my circle back in place. Again, I'm going to line up with that line that we drew earlier. And of course, my seam line going across. And we're going to get our one, two, and again. I like these little leverage handles. I've added these to um, our circles. I prefer something that's a little leverage. I'm not holding on to it like a handle. I'm actually just using it for leverage because sometimes the flat rulers for my old hands um, can be a little rough. So now I'm gonna get rid of that. We're gonna travel in. Grab a puzzle piece. Slide it on, stabilize it with my tape, line that up. Again, I've got my tape there that's lined up. I've got my measurement there. That's why we have all the measurements on the rulers. Make sure when you buy anybody's circles that they have all of the measurements on there, not just crosshatch. Now we're going to come around one two, three, and then I'm going to continue all the way down and we're going to repeat that all the way down on the inside circles. Once I get that done, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you a few of the, um, you want to widen that shot for me, please? We're going to do some of the outer triangles so that you see how a few of those are done with the ruler facing the other way. Okay, so now we've got our outer triangles and I've gone ahead. We're going to start in the corner so that I can show you one from the side and then one upside down. So I've got my, I put my ruler in place. I've locked my stitches. I'm going to come around. And back, stop, move the ruler, ditch down the side just a little bit. Whoops, let's get rid of those feathers there. Okay, and get rid of my tail. Slide my ruler in place, handle, puzzle piece, tape, everything's nice and stable, I make sure that my center is pointing out to the tip, right on the line, my tape here goes right to the edge. Now everything is stable. We go out to the ditch. One, two, stop, move. Ditch.
across. I might go ahead, put my big guy in place. Now I've got my tape there, so I want to make sure to check it so that I'm on the right side of the tape. You want a complete half circle. Okay. Line that up. Come around. Stop. Pause. Remember, there's some adhesive on the back of the ruler, so I can move my hand and the ruler is going to stay in place. Come back around. Like that. Move the ruler. Take it in. Line that up. That is why I love that tape. You can move it over and over. Okay, so now I'm going to slide that. Make sure it's in the right position. Now the tape is on this side of the line. So I can get that full quarter inch. And then I also check this arrow. So these rulers not only have the arrow on one side, but all the way around they have the measurements. So it's 360 degrees of perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna slide over. One. Two. And you'll see that because there's a complete circle there, you're not going to get a ba bump from some of the circles that people just have you, they put a notch in it and have you slide in. So now that's done. I'm going to slide over and continue that all the way across over to here. And then we're going to be ready to do our rays. Okay, so I'm going to show you a few different things that I'm going to do with this shape in here. And so let's start with the first one, which is the one that we drew out. So I'm gonna line up the C. Again, my asterisk is right in the middle. Line that up like that. Turn it. That dyslexia kicks in, sometimes it's hard. There. Okay, so now we've got our um, B and our C, and so now I'm going to move to my D. Again, I line up in the middle. I put my D line on that seam line right there, and then I continue to go, keep my asterisk right in the middle. My D line is on the next line. So every time I turn this and I line this up, again, you could just simply use measurements and go down and pivot from the center to mark this out, but I like to go ahead and use this wonderful designer tool and then turn again D okay so I might look at that and say okay well for some things that might be enough but I'm gonna take it a step further again I'm gonna take the middle of my asterisk right down here to the middle and I'm gonna go to E and we're gonna divide that in half pivot E goes to each line that's marked. E goes to each line that's marked. Make sure you're checking two places, the middle and here. Pivot. 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 And you can see how this would work in an actual block. You would go all the way around and get this wonderful radiating lines coming out. So now I have divided this space and everything else is quilted. Don't really need that right now. So now I'm going to bring my machine over, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to travel up this line and then go in, out, up, in, out, up, in, out, up, in, up, out, all the way around. Lock my stitches. Okay. Get 
my ruler and I do because I'm going to be traveling on that same line. Of course I have my adhesive on my ditch ruler. I always have a couple ditch rulers and one of them I use and I and I keep to use for adhesive when I want to do stuff like this and then one I have that I slide when I'm actually doing ditch work so I'm sliding the ruler. I go in, let me change that to precision. Okay, that way we don't have our cruise mode on. All right, and before I come back on that line, let me get rid of my tail. Line that up again. There we go. Travel my ditch. Go to the next line. In, out, ditch, in, touch, out, ditch, and this is just something you take your time with so that you hit those lines correctly. In, out, and one of the things that I like to do, which I didn't do just now, is as I put my ruler here to travel that ditch, it's hard to see where the line is here because I've got my ruler right there. So I might just go ahead and extend that just a little bit past. And then that way, I know right where to stop. So things you figure out as you do it more and more. Line that up. In. Out. Up. In. Out. Up. In, and if I'm off a little bit from my line, nobody's going to notice that. Down. Up. Head down the other side now. Stop. In, out, over, line that up, in, out, down, in, out, down, do my little bit of chalk mark there, see a little better. In out Down. So now I have that complete sunset done.